enjoys learning new methods of marketing that improves the speed and accuracy for creating predictable and scalable growth. Very timely coming off of Pete's. His specialties include B2B marketing, product management, product marketing, strategy, business development, event production and management, sales development, and demand gen. Hopefully we'll get to some of these. Just a little bit of all, yeah. And fun fact, fun fact for all. In high school, Kevin competed in a statewide competition for accounting. Needless to say, that experience set him off towards a glorious career in marketing. <laughs> Please welcome Kevin O'Malley. Thank you. Wow. Quite, a, quite an introduction. I'm, I'm happy to be here. We're going we're gonna to cover a lot in the next 20 minutes. So how many marketers are in the room? Ah, sweet. How many people are not marketers and want to become marketers in the next 20 minutes? I'm going to share a lot with you of how uh, some of the things that we're doing at SalesLoft and how we think about marketing. And so I hope at the end of this conversation, uh, you may have a different perspective on when we, when we think about SaaS marketing, I think a lot of us think about the metrics, the conversion rates, the optimizations, the A-B testing, right? Yes, you do that. That's table stakes. I think with marketers and SaaS have an opportunity to do something different and bring back what's important about marketing is the creative side, the brand side. Uh, and so I want to introduce some of the concepts and, and structure that we have in place to ensure that we, we have that in mind. But first, just a, a quick background. Um, my, my sort of path to marketing uh, highlighted by, by John there. Um, it actually uh, started, my, my dad started an apparel company, uh, Mickey and Company, and I was a young child watching my dad be an entrepreneur, build a brand, and it was very inspiring. So I, of course, wanted to do that, and, and so I started my own paper route. To, to I ultimately wanted to become my father, right? And so that uh, led to not very good success. I knew there was more in life. So then I went to Northeastern University up in Boston so I can go to school for six months and work for six months and really discover what I want and didn't want. Uh, from there, I had an opportunity as an intern to choose my path. And this is really where my life took a, a different direction. I had an opportunity at Frito-Lay, and I had an opportunity at A.C. Nielsen. I don't know if you know, you certainly know uh, Frito-Lay. A.C. Nielsen gathers all the point of sale data from grocery stores and convenience stores and resells that to brands so they can better understand market share. So I had an opportunity to decide between these two interns. But let me give you a mix of there. I'm going to, even more challenging, Frito-Lay intern was in Martha's Vineyard for the summer. Had my own route, marketed my own product, have a pretty good summer in Martha's Vineyard. Or I could go to Norwalk, Connecticut and, and have a cube and crunch data for a summer. Now, what do you think I chose? No, nope. I don't know what, what got into me. But I actually chose Norwalk, Connecticut to work in a cube. And the reason why I did that is, is right around the same time as when the, uh, the internet started happening. And there was so much data that was being talked about. And I felt as an as a undergrad in marketing that data was going to become more and more important, understanding and, and having more insights uh, than ever before. And so I really wanted to dive into that to better learn about how to use data in marketing. And so I, uh, I passed up the opportunity uh, to go to Martha's Vineyard, but it ultimately led me to Atlanta uh, at Coca-Cola, over then to the big UPS. But then I got the uh, startup bug. And uh, quickly thereafter, I met a gentleman, Kyle Porter, who uh, is our CEO of SalesLoft, a uh, week after he started SalesLoft. And so we sparked up a, uh, a good uh, relationship over a few years, did some fun stuff together while he was ramping up uh, SalesLoft. And uh, I was one of the earlier customers. And I had the opportunity to be one of the first speakers at a Rainmaker event as a customer. Uh, I think this is the last time I actually wore a jacket. Uh, ever since I uh, joined SalesLoft, I've been wearing uh, pullovers and t-shirts, and now I'm, I'm starting to bring back the collar a little bit. But uh, SalesLoft, is, uh, my journey there really started as a, as a customer, and seeing the impact that the technology was having on, on, the, uh, on the sales market and certainly marketing as well. Um, eventually, I, I led that, uh, um, led me to SalesLoft, which I was uh, leading marketing, and, and this was my first week of marketing at SalesLoft, and I'm like, where's the data? I need, I'm here to crunch data. Let's go build a pipeline. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm out on the streets in San Francisco during Dreamforce. Uh, we're putting on a fake uh, a presidential campaign for Mark Benioff. He's the CEO of, of Salesforce, and we did a uh, Benioff, 20, uh, uh, Benioff President 2020, and we did this whole campaign around uh, why you should vote for Benioff for president. 
and it got a tremendous amount of exposure. It had nothing to do with conversion rates, had nothing to do with optimization and, and your, your, your uh, conversion points, your funnel. This was about building a brand and building a presence and sticking out uh, without all the noise out there, as I'm sure many of you are out selling and marketing your products. There's a lot of alternatives, and you uh, certainly have to find ways to, to stick out from that crowd. And that's something I learned early on at SalesLoft, that, it, that it's, it's more than just the numbers. And it's more than, um, than, than you think today as we think about marketers. It's, it's bringing back the, the brand concept. So um, for those that know sales off or don't, don't know, just a little background, some context, what drives our marketing. Uh, it's really not an untold story. We share a lot about sales loft. But the, uh, now I'm, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. But the point of this slide is we have a, we've done over 130 product releases in the last year. So as a marketer, you can imagine trying to keep up with the pace of innovation how to continuously uh, stay ahead of the change that, that SalesLoft is, is driving, the growth that it's having as a marketer to, to constantly rethink how you're going to market, change position, change your uh, perception, change your messaging. The pace in which the marketing operates at SalesLoft is at a staggering rate. Uh, it's both a, an opportunity uh, and, and a <laughs> it, uh, it definitely is a challenging uh, part of being a marketer at SalesLoft is staying ahead of the growth. But, I'll take that any day. Um, the other thing is uh, we've had amazing recognition. So as, you know, when, when your company gets recognized as, as a fast-growing company, uh, we, we, uh, Kyle and Rob vested early on in culture. Uh, the, the awards and recognition we get really helps uh, elevate us as, a, as an organization. And uh, we're proud to also be here in Atlanta and, and really help the community uh, that uh, we believe is only beginning uh, in, around SaaS here in Atlanta. So it's, um, I'm, I'm excited to continue to share what we're learning so that uh, others can benefit from it and, and apply to their business so we can have more sales lofts and terminuses and, and rigors uh, here in Atlanta. Um, that actually backdrop is right over there. That's where sales loft, after we um, grew, grew out of ATV, we went next door. And uh, that's, that's the team uh, before we moved to Midtown. But culture is a big part of, of uh, who sales loft is about, um, but it's also part of our marketing. You think about how to align your values to how you're going to market. When you're marketing, you're creating a brand, you're creating a promise. That promise needs to be realized at some point. And so t having your messaging and having your position be represented and reflective of who you are is a much easier proposition than making a promise or, or following values that are not aligned with your company. So values in, our, in, in marketing and branding uh, go, go very closely hand in hand. All right, so let's talk some marketing. For those that are marketers, it's going to be fun. For those that are not, uh, hopefully you find it fun. Um, I want to uh, introduce you to sort of the, the three areas of, of marketing, uh, how we structure the group at marketing. There's, there's 15 of us uh, within the marketing uh, function. And there's, there is three main areas. We've got the brand experience team. They're thinking about how do I represent the brand in every touch point that we have, both offline and online. Our product description, our company description, is on over 25 sites around the internet. So we changed the way our boilerplate, we've got to change 25 different sites all that same time, right? The, um, when we go to an event, we, we speak to people at, our, uh, at a conference. They go to our website. Are those two things aligned? Do they, do they the, the promises that we make in, the, in the, the, the trade show booth, and they go to check it out online, are those, are those in sync? And so brand is a really key aspect uh, of how we, we go to market. And then there's uh, product marketing. And that's, that's the follow through of the brand promise. That's the actual product itself and the, and the way you position it and market the capabilities to solve your customers' problems. And then you have a very important part, uh, which many of you think of uh, demand gen, we call it programs. We are uh, an account-based structured uh, team, so we have uh, a very s a specific set of group of accounts that we go after, and the programs team are the ones designing and, and managing the, the campaigns to go after those target accounts, or the ones aligning with sales to uh, ensure we can engage those accounts. So those three groups work together, and it looks something like this. So you, got the, you have the brand, you have the product marketing, you have the programs. You overlap those in the center all the time, every day. We are talking about and thinking about customers, not the, not the ones that you uh, want to have, the ones you have. Because that's ultimately what your business is going to be built on long term. And so we, we are constantly evolving our marketing around our customer. And then we go out from there. And so 
uh, I, I mentioned about those three groups. Each of these groups are overlapping. So there's not one thing that we do in marketing that doesn't require somebody else's help. So for instance, let's say we have um, a new feature. Well, product marketing is the one who creates the message, how, they're gonna, uh, how we want to talk about it. Brand uh, is social media, so they're the helping us promote it. Um, brand's also the one creating the events. Uh, they're the ones also create the content. And so they're creating content to reinforce the value of that product on product blogs, ebooks. And so it's very well aligned there, but they're also very specific disciplines. Um, and so each of those overlaps drives product innovation. It also drives um, from the brand to programs this is where personalization comes in. With account-based, you have a great opportunity since you're focused on so many. Uh, we, we focus on 6,000 accounts. Then we tier those accounts. We have our tier one that are only 30 accounts. Then you have 200 accounts that we target. And then the rest are, are on the, the, the bottom of the pyramid. And so we have an opportunity to personalize that experience. That's where that overlap occurs. And that team is working together to create really uh, creative and interesting ways to engage uh, our tiered customers or prospects. Uh, all the way from, we'll send a food truck uh, over to our top tier customer um, to, to put it right outside their company and offer a, um, some free lunch for, for those that would like it uh, to get noticed. Uh, but we also do uh, you know, use products like Terminus for air cover ads and, and other creative ways to uh, stay in front of those uh, accounts. Um, so well, there's one here, it's a little build up here, but uh, this is a team that works I'm going to, yep, there you go. Uh, there's 15 people, as I mentioned, amazing skills. They all specialize in their very specific areas. Uh, as you grow your marketing team, uh, for those that are, are in a growth pattern, those three circles are going to remain. What, what's happening is those circles get bigger, and they get a lot more complex. You have a lot more customers, so you have more internal departments being built. You have a lot of different inputs going on, but this, this structure has uh, stayed with us from going from a million dollars in uh, ARR to uh, close to 25. And it's just the circles have certainly grown, but that collaboration and the overlap has, has remained the same. I think I'm pointing in the right direction here. Aha. So what happens when, when you go to market with these three things working really well together? You've got the product marketing tight on what the product actually does and how to position it well. You've got the brand that's, that's creating a promise to potential customers and the customers on what to expect, how to, how to look and feel with, with when you're doing business with SalesLoft. Um, and then you've got your programs team that are tightly integrated programs to engage these accounts. And what comes out is, is really this, this thing what we talk about is capturing uh, the hearts. You know, we, uh, we think about uh, a lot of times when you think about content marketing, you're thinking about creating content that solves problems. So the tendency is to think about the mind. What, what are the, what are the, the rational uh, issues that that particular prospect is having? But the first thing we think about at SalesLoft is a very emotional side. How do, you, how do you capture their hearts? How do you tell them that you love them? We love salespeople. That's what we do at SalesLoft. That drives our, our purpose every day. We love salespeople. We love the profession of sales. We love solving their problems. We love salespeople. And then, therefore, when you start with that, what happens is you, you naturally create a brand that represents that promise. And so capturing the hearts, capturing the minds. You know, I love the, the moments when you're presenting and, and everybody takes out their iPhone to capture that one framework that everybody thinks is the, the golden answer. I gotta, get, I gotta capture that photo. Uh, there's a lot of great content being created. Um, you know, having, having content and insights is critical to connect both on the top of the funnel, but also once you get them engaged. Marketing is not just about generating leads or getting that initial engagement of account. It's actually getting them all the way from lead through renewal. And so having insights along the way uh, that will provide value to their business uh, is something that we're, we're spending more and more time on we're doing our own research. We're, we're taking aggregate of all of our 500 million sales activities that have gone through our platform and coming out and sharing what insights that we've seen with this data. And so what we're trying to do with that is try, trying to connect with them by helping their business, adding value every step of the way as they engage with our, with our brand. 
And then ultimately, uh, one of our, our sort of core pillar marketing strategies is to create the largest sales force. We call that our customers. And if you, if you promise, if you make the promise correct, and you follow through with that promise, and you treat them right, and you add value to their business, what you get in return is them on stage talking about you. you, you they go out to G2 Crowd, where one, one customer can make the greatest impact, but also one pissed off customer can also make the greatest impact. And so you've got to have a really thoughtful approach to ensuring that you're creating advocates out of your customers. And I'm not talking about uh, a point system to, to win t-shirts. I'm talking about truly connecting with them, surprising and delighting them, making sure that they're getting the service that they, they, they deserve. Are you investing enough in maximizing the use of the product? Are you giving them training to ensure they're adopting your product? So all those things are around creating that advocacy to ultimately ensure that uh, they're ultimately our largest sales force. So we, you know, coming back to reinforcing this, you know, engaged, are we engaging them through their hearts, their minds, and what difference are you making in their business? And so as I think about some questions for you, as you think about if you're a marketer or wanting to become one or just trying to figure out marketing, um, I, you know, I ask these three questions, uh, and you should ask for your, for your business, is what are you doing to enlighten the hearts of your customers? Or are you just thinking about them as, as data points, conversion points, A-B testing, open, open rates, click-through rates? These are, like I say, the, these are people too. And so looking at the, the aspect of what are you doing to enlighten them, uh, what are you doing to engage the minds? So are you out there finding uh, research and insights that can actually uh, challenge the way they're doing their business or enlighten them on something that maybe they didn't see a problem that was coming? Maybe it's a market opportunity. Maybe it's another way of looking at their business. But what are you doing to enlighten them? and engage their minds. And then ultimately, it's what are you doing to make a difference in their, in their business? This, and we talk about this a lot. We spend a lot of time about what are we actually, what problem are we actually solving for our customers? What problem are they going to have? How do we anticipate the, the problem that they're gonna have that before they even have it? And that's where, where the data comes in, that's where we spend a lot of time talking to customers, we're a lot of time bringing that together and reflecting where, where are they gonna be? making sure that we're making a difference. As a, as a marketing leader, one of the greatest opportunities I've had has been at SalesLoft. And it's been an amazing uh, ride. Uh, for three years, I've had the opportunity to uh, lead the marketing effort there from 30 employees to now close to 300. Uh, it is a lifetime uh, experience that uh, you try never to take for granted because being in the startup world, it is very difficult to get to a million it's very difficult to get to five, and it's very difficult to get to 25. And I, I appreciate every moment that I have. I have had some lessons learned, though. Um, you know, and these ones, these the three that I love to share with you. Uh, as we've added people, um, you know, assuming goodwill, that uh, we move so fast. And when you're at a startup, you just have to assume that people that are coming to uh, work at, at SalesLoft, uh, every day they're trying to do the right thing. And so the, the thing that I always remind myself, in fact, some of our team members have it on their desk, assume goodwill. Assume that the person's trying to do the right thing. Maybe they need more better leadership in ensuring clarity of the mission or clarity of the role. I mean, some of the real fundamentals. We spend a lot of time about clarity of role, clarity of mission. And you, you can't, you can't over underestimate the uh, power of that. The other one is uh, negative stress <laughs> uh, in ensuring that you know, as a fast-growing company, you know, Kyle's sort of a hard-charging CEO, right? You, you, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, John knows him. Um, he's amazing. We're trying to do a lot of things, and we're all human, though. And so what, what I, I've learned is that, uh, and still learning, is that when trying to do a lot, um, it can get very stressful. And as a leader, you have to ensure that that, that stress, that, that pressure of performance doesn't turn into negative because it, it impacts the productivity of your team. They can feel that, they, and, it, and it takes away, uh, distracts them from what they, they should be focused on. Um, and then delegate what you love the most. As you grow, you add more people. Um, you're hired for a particular skill or a particular reason. 
uh, I've, I've found where I've, I have to give up things that I, I love doing because how am I going to grow? And the number one challenge I've had at Sales Loft is growing faster, growing personally faster than the company. You know, how do I continue to invest in my skills so that I can keep up the pace uh, at Sales Loft? And so uh, those are the, the three things that uh, I share with you and, and things that I've learned along the way. Cool. Thank you, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll kick this one off too because I do have a, uh, a question. So you talked about, I love the transition from uh, coming into sales loft, data, 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 to talking about capturing the minds and the hearts. What type of communication are you as the team doing? Is it once a week, once a, once a month of brainstorming the future product or the future problems that you're solving, communicating? Yeah. Like how, how do you guys, how, how as a leader do you facilitate um, that kind of ideation? Yeah, yeah uh, one thing that uh, I think sales loft got a, Kyle, particularly, and Rob, they uh, invested, invested in a, a rhythm of operating the business. And so we have um, anything from uh, one page strategic plan, so that it's very clear of what we're trying to achieve as a company. And then that brings it down to the function level, where I have a one page strategic plan, where the, the group can understand they're, they're part of the whole. Um, and so there's the, the broad sort of view of the longer view of what we're trying to accomplish. And so it allows people to align to that. Uh, we use an OKR system that uh, allows them to align objectives of what they're doing and then the key results, the, the, the effort that they're, the results of their efforts so that they're very aligned to what we're trying to achieve. Um, but the, the daily rhythm for us is we do, uh, you know, the daily stand-up where we talk about what, what we did last yesterday, what we're going to do uh, today, um, and then we get together every other week. Uh, it's sort of set up as a... Um, I used to refer to it as agile marketing. I don't use any buzzword now for it because it's way modified. But uh, it's essentially bringing the team together every two weeks where you do a little broader retrospect of what worked, what didn't, what changes you want to make. And then everybody sort of shares what they're going to be doing over the next two weeks to ensure, uh, to ensure the alignment's still there. Awesome. Great. Were there any other couple questions? Hey, thanks. Um, yeah. You talked about the importance of data and the importance like, of developing yourself personally faster than the growth of the company. How do you make sure that your data and your systems evolving, are evolving to keep up as well? I blame sales ops when that doesn't go well. Um, I'm, I'm in sales ops, so I can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just had that email yesterday. I'm like, it sounds like a sales ops problem. Um, yeah, data, the, the, where, where we uh, spend a lot of time on the data up front is around the account selection. Uh, and it's a challenge. Uh, there's so much great data out there. It's bringing it all together and keeping it up to date uh, and making sure that the, the fields that you're referencing to make these decisions are the best possible data. Uh, it is an ongoing challenge, um, you know, anywhere from moving providers and now you have a new data source that sort of everybody wants to question whether, you know, those are good, good phone numbers or not. And, um, you know, we, it's it, data uh, um, quality is an ongoing uh, topic and, and certainly an area that uh, we can get better in and, and I'm sure uh, uh, a lot of other people are uh, challenged with the same thing but yep. Could you give us a few specific examples of things you've done to turn your customers into those advocates that you want them to be? Yep. Um, I think the the <coughs> biggest example of where that advocacy comes into play is our annual Rainmaker event. Uh, we, we, uh, we started it, uh, Kyle sort of saw, saw the foresight of having a community that comes together on a regular basis or at least once a year. And the first year we had 30 people, which I think it was in this building. Um, and then it went to 300 and then it went to 600. And last year we had um, over 1,100. And next year we're planning for 1,800. Um, the numbers are not as important as the people that are coming together. Uh, it's, just, it's just been, since it's been larger, the conversations have been more, right? But it's, uh, it's still the same idea of bringing those, uh, the advocate base mixed in with um, people that are sort of on the bubble. They're like, I really like this community, I really love the topic, uh, but it's creating the environment uh, that allows these groups to come together and share. A lot of these uh, sales leaders love sharing what, what they're doing that's working and what's not. 
Um, and so giving them uh, a channel to uh, communicate uh, and share their stories with others. Uh, Rainmaker has been um, you know, some of the best examples. Uh, and, then, um, and then certainly just giving them, a lot of these companies are selling technology as well, giving them avenues online, whether it's doing videos on them or case studies, uh, incorporating them into our content. Uh, it's, that's another way for us to share back some of the, the, the community uh, learnings to, to the rest of the group. On your slide that showed the, intersec the intersection that resulted in customer. There's a lot going on in there, yes. So on the customer being the obsessed focus, yeah. um, if I called your company for sales or I called your company for service, who would pick up the phone first? Well, that's interesting because uh, Katie Christensen, our, our customer success uh, VP, she's going to be speaking later. Um, the way, um, so if a customer called, uh, we use a, a routing system that detects that they're a customer and it'll route to their assigned um, owner and they'll, they'll be the person that would reach out to them. Um, so it's, it's on the front end, if they, if they reach out to us, it routes them to the, to the best, best person. But obviously other building functions like support and so they're, they're set up to be a lot more uh, proactive on the response time. Um, but Katie, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, cover some of that uh, this afternoon. And that ju answer? just to follow up, you, yeah. you, may, you may not have the, I have the problem, you may not have the problem <laughs> of resources. Um, are you able to spend the resources that you want on the clients in order to make sure that you're retaining them? Or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, from the, from the customer marketing standpoint, uh, when you think about our events like Rainmaker and, and some of the other things that we do for um, going like user meetups, local, we're doing a lot more field marketing events. On the marketing side, we're, we're well funded in ensuring that we're investing uh, in celebrating uh, them. But uh, you know, the, the challenge or the, where, where other aspects of the business are going through are what's the ratio between support, number of support reps and number of CSMs to customers and how do you distribute them and um, that's a whole uh, another model that uh, Luckily, marketing doesn't have to deal with, but Katie does, so she'll be able to uh, highlight some of that. We leave all the, the tough stuff to Katie. That's, the, that's my going in position. Okay, last question. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, you talked about enlightening hearts. Could yes. you talk a little bit more about that, what you mean by that? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think with, with, the, with the heart, we talk about the heart and mind idea is the sort of a motive brand that, that we're creating around we love salespeople, um, that it's, it's sort of true to who we are as a company. And so that comes out in different ways, comes out in ways that uh, when we're at events, um, we will surprise and delight a customer with, you know, the customer socks, right? It's uh, <laughs> little things. It's not, uh, I'm going to come in, in and uh, take you on a cruise. Um, it's recognizing them as customers. It's recognizing them as, as people that were early on with your company and you're appreciating them as a customer. You're also um, connecting with them to show how much value and importance they are to, to Sales Loft. So um, you know, we, the, um, the heart thing is, is we also believe that heart aspect is hard to replicate and it's in an overtime is a differentiator, much like it is uh, with, with Apple versus Dell. And so if you're, you're investing in that emotional connection that you have with your customers, that is much harder to replicate than I've got great data. So. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, but we have a, we have an ongoing campaign called Sales Love, and we will vi drop into New York City uh, with 15 of our, of our folks, and they'll visit every customer during that day. They'll drop off cookies, a t-shirt, and a thank you. And we're not asking for upgrades. We're not asking for renewals. We're just there to say thank you and uh, a token of appreciation. So those, uh, that's one thing that we do to ensure that that connection is made. Yeah. Let's give it up for Mr. O'Malley. Thank you, Kevin. Wonderful, wonderful.